Hello and welcome to Refuse. As always, I'm Plume Noir and this is Captain Marvel number 5. This is the end of the first storyline of this book uh, called Reentry, uh, written by Kelly Thompson, which at some point I really need to stop saying, you know, Kelly Thompson is a good writer, but... Because I've said that so many times. And between these past five issues and uh, the West Coast Avengers book that just got canceled... At some point, I really need to stop saying that and just say, you know what, Kelly Thompson has written some okay things in the past, but I think that was just a fluke. Um, let's let's kind of recap the storyline so far and see how much sense this makes. So, Carol is um, uh, she's being interviewed by a woman who um, as uh, a, a old Fantastic Four villain, better off her gun, called Machismo, calling himself now Nuclear Man. Um, you know, basically kidnaps her through a portal, which leads them to a time displaced um, force field over. Uh, I already forget the area that it's supposed to be part of New York. Um, I, I think it's on the island. Um, that the men can't get through. But women can get through, such as Carol, She-Hulk she breaks through. Now, he's trying to get Captain Marvel because he wants a Captain Marvel as his bride. You know, because he's machismo, you know? Yeah, uh, you see? And women are beneath him, ha ha ha. And here's Butters. We haven't had a Butters uh, visit in a while. Hi, boo-boo. I need you to move, sweetie. I'm in the middle of recapping a really bad story, so I'm just going to kind of slide you off to the side, hon. So, where was I? Oh, yes. So, in this force field, time is moving faster, which we've already seen in a... Um, John Byrne did that in a Fantastic Four. Actually, at the end of his run, he never actually finished the storyline, if I remember. Um, he left a book, editorial, and they ended up having a stupid ending, if I remember correctly. Um, but anyway, there's a time displaced bubble bubble over the city. Uh, the city is moving faster, uh, time that is, and it's a couple months into the future. And now the city is already falling apart. Everyone's gone into Mad Max style, you know, painting their faces, torn up clothes, shaving their heads. Uh, people's powers aren't working. Um, <laughs> now, this is all the plan of Machismo to get Captain Marvel. It just so happens there's a bunch of uh, women who have, who, female superheroes who happen to be in the city at the time. Hazmat lives there. Um, um, he ends up luring Rogue there for Captain Marvel um, to contain her or to use her against her, to use Rogue against Captain Marvel. This whole plan is really dumb. Because, you see, Machismo can teleport. You know, he's from another dimension, like an alternate future type dimension. And he can teleport, and he can go between <laughs> the places. So why he has this whole sped-up time displacement bubble over the city, why is he capturing all the men, but slowly going after the women, leaving them? Why is he attacking the women, attacking their headquarters with the giant robots? None of this makes sense. It's one of those things that the more you think about this storyline, what is Machismo really trying to do? And then you find out that he's set up a bomb in their midst. Hmm. Gee, wonder what that could be. Could it have anything to do with his son? Hmm? You actually can't see this, but I'm actually putting my broken pinky up, pinky up to my face like Dr. Evil. So yeah, uh, this cover, uh, we see um, alternate, you can't even call it alternate reality, time displaced. It, the, the city is now a few months into the future and everything's gone to hell. It's almost like there's a joke in there to be made about it only being you know, women and the city fall apart and it's all in ruins and they've gone to Mad Max style and... There's a joke to be made in there, but I'm not going to make it because there are robots attacking everything that Machismo is sending after them. 
And seriously, this whole thing makes no goddamn sense. So, yeah, we have the alternate Carol here, but her reflection is her usual style. You can see her Mad Max clothes, um, her dystopian knitwear. Um, uh, Butters, no, we're trying to show off the cover. This is a um, Amanda Connor cover who, I, I love her art. And this is, I see what she's going for, and it's, it's not very, I don't think this is a good cover. You know, you work in her emblem, got it, haha. <laughs> Reflection, her real self versus how she's currently looking. Um, but it's almost like it's too high. Okay, come on, boo. You, you need to step back. Um, it, it's too high. It feels like the, the dividing line should be closer to down here. But anyway, we'll open this up. Yeah, re-entry, we got all this. Now, at the end of the last issue, uh, when Carol and Rogue were fighting for Machismo, his pleasure, um, Carol came up with the plan to have Rogue absorb Carol completely. And now that Rogue has absorbed Carol, she is taking over Rogue's body. Rogue, who is not af affected by the power um, um, neutralizer thing. Um, and Carol is, she said at one point she feels kind of affected, she feels weak, but that's just because she's so powerful. She's so powerful, you know. So, they have the little fight back and forth. But one thing I wanted to point out is I can't imagine how much longer they're going to be doing these old stand soapboxes. Because when you read this one, and I'm going to break, and I'm going to, I mean, we're seven minutes in, I know. But we're going to take a break here, because we'll go through the rest of it really quickly. And take a look at this to show how far Marvel Marvel has fallen. You know, we sometimes receive letters accusing us of publishing too many titles. Now this is 1968. Um, a number of fans have said it's too expensive trying to buy all of our mags, and they ask us not to be so greedy and to publish less of them. So we thought you might like to hear our side of it. The only reason we constantly add new titles is because you ask for them. Who asked for the fifth number one Captain Marvel issue in the past, like, few years? It, actually, I think we're up to six or seven because there was that higher and faster, like, one shot. And uh, Butters is attacking the hell out of me. I don't know what set her off. Um, yeah, thousands upon thousands of your letters demanded that we give Cap, Shellhead, Namor, and all the others their own magazines. In fact, remember when we, when we tried to discontinue the Hulk some years ago? Your unceasing outcry forced us to bring him back, despite the fact that it imposed a tremendous strain upon our already overworked staff. And each time we try to publish fewer 25-cent summer specials, you swamp us with letters demanding more than ever. Personally, we'd be happy to let up a bit. Many of us, including yours truly, haven't had a vacation in years. But our policy was, is, and always will be to give Marvel Dim what it asked for. And judging by our ever skyrocketing sales, we're not far from the mark. See, that's the part right there. Marvel doesn't listen. Marvel does not listen anymore. Um, and by our ever skyrocketing sales, we're not far from the mark. No. No, that's not it. Um, that's... You see, I'm going to stop right there because we see how far Marvel has really fallen. You know, they, they've moved away from their mission statement, so to speak, and they don't care. They just push out. When this book fails, this Captain Marvel book, when it fails, and it will, this book will be canceled. I This is issue 5. I will be surprised if this makes it to issue 12. 16, if you're lucky. And then what will happen? Another number one. Yeah, just in time for the Captain Marvel DVD to come out. So give it three months. So five, six, seven. It'll be canceled at issue eight. And then um, a new issue one to go along with the, the when the Captain Marvel movie is released on DVD and, and Blu-ray. Uh, I'm calling that right now. So yeah, this is sad when you see this. And then you look at all the other books going on right now. It's, it's really sad. So... Anyway, on to this book. So we get the whole catching up thing. Um, 
you know, Rogue's um, powers wearing off. Uh, so uh, Carol is back in her body. They have a little bit of a bonding moment, I guess you could say, where they're going to, you know, team up against Machismo. And, uh, you know, yeah, that was quite a play you had, Desperate Times. Your mind is your own? You mean, are you gone, or does he no longer have control of me? Well, both. Well, then yes to both. I'm me, you're you, and he's an ass. Oh, boy. So there's some girl power right there. Um, you know, uh, what would you say here? Um, you know, agreed. You feel like helping me kick the crap out of a nuclear man? That's also going to be a yes. Okay, yeah. So Carol has Rogue distract Machismo while she goes and checks in with the troops and fills them in on the whole bomb situation that they that's been planted in their ranks. Um, uh, you know, Rogue's joined the team, and I like those odds. How's it going down here? I like it better with you in the mix. Yeah, I see. There's all the affirmation and everything that goes on several times here. Um, Nuclear Man is claiming he set us up a bomb. He sent us a bomb. I actually read that as he set us up the bomb. You know, move Zig. Um, yeah, of course he did. Yeah, you know, he set a bomb and Hazmat is, sigh, of course he did. Anyone have any idea? Yeah, I do. We should talk. Yeah, we know it's going to be Sam. And uh, we cut over to uh, Spider-Woman and Jen and... Uh, uh, which one is that one supposed to be? I already forgot. Is that Echo? Um, we should have come up with a battle cry. Too late. We can workshop it while we fight. I can't believe you guys are my role models. You're so lucky. Oh, you're so silly. Oh, all you guys working together. Everyone likes each other. It's great, isn't it? Um, and then we get to, uh, you know, the fact that Sam is the bomb. Sam is the bomb? <laughs> That's actually kind of funny when we say it. Um, do you think Sam knows? No. I don't know if that makes it better or worse. Worse, it makes him innocent. And his father, his murderer. Uh, yeah. You know, we have time to, everyone take a pose. Now, one thing in this issue, you'll see a lot of fighting and a lot of kicking and shooting. You don't really see what they're attacking too much. There's only a couple panels where you actually see the robots uh, that Nuclear Man is sending after them. So yeah, Sam starts glowing, and it turns out that, yeah, he is, he realizes, I'm, I'm the bomb, aren't I? Uh, how did he know that? Did he overhear it over here? You know, in the middle of battle, they're just kind of talking all casually. So, he somehow already knows about the bomb. He has to be killed, um, you know, because, as he said, you know, he's lied, he's done some bad things, um, but he wants to be a hero, and, you know, I said no. Part of being a hero is finding another way. We're finding another way, Sam. Um, yeah, the whole point of having Rogue here, you know, where this is going, it's all predictable. You know, he had a giant gun. What happened to that giant gun? If he was that worried, couldn't he just, like, run away and just kind of blow his own head off? And if he's out there fighting on the front lines and he's the bomb, um, are the robots actively trying not to shoot him? You know, avoiding him, because if he dies, that kind of ruins um, uh, Machismo's whole plan. So, wouldn't, they, some, wouldn't someone twig onto the fact that no one is shooting in his direction? Uh, so, yeah, Rogue is going to absorb his powers. Um, yeah, it kind of makes sense. Sounds like they're going to try and defuse him using Rogue. I mean, if you can drain the power of a bomb, it can't do much damage, right? And, you know, Hazmat's just casually... Putting the gun over her shoulder and shooting, you know, because it's just how great she is. And, uh, you know, yeah, this is my excited face. Can't you tell? I like you, kid. Aww. So, of course, Rogue absorbs his powers and sees his memory, you know, with his father and them planning and fighting. And I guess he had a girlfriend he took selfies with. When did this happen? Uh, wasn't he, like, raised wherever Machismo's from? But once he is uh, depowered, um, his bomb parts depowered, I guess you could say, find out that, yeah, not only is he the bomb, he's actually been what's been 
sapping other people's powers because that's what's been powering him up. It's also he is what is causing the force field to be in place. So once he's gone, well, depowered, you know, then, you know, Jen becomes She-Hulk again. And, uh, oh, I thought I said S there for a minute. Um, and, uh, okay, the barrier is nearly down. She-Hulk and Hazmat, Hazmat are powering back up. Let's go be big damn heroes and finish this together. I like that. So, yeah, then they have the rest of the fight, and, you know, Hazmat has a great idea to use her full powers on the nuclear man. Hazmat. Nuclear man. You see where this is going? It turns out it powers him up and he booms. <laughs> but it's okay. Everyone's okay. It doesn't matter because, like uh, Carol said, they use teamwork. And while she's blasting him, she has She Hulk come down on him. And yeah, then you get this standing over. What? No more jokes? Get up. I dare you. And he says, you know, this isn't the last you've seen of me. This insult will not go unanswered, unanswered Marvel wrench. And he teleports out of there. Wait, where's Sam? Oh, thank God, he's still here. He's okay. Sam, I... And he gets teleported out. He's gone. I should have realized what was happening. You couldn't have known, Carol. He was my responsibility. You had a lot of responsibilities. She just got there. Remember, all the other heroes, all the other women have been here all this time, you know, doing this little resistance here. And it comes up to Carol to save the day, and everyone just kind of hands everything over to her. So, yeah, I'm going to stop it right there because um, now that the barrier's down, they have to, you know, rescue people. No mention made of um, all the, I'm just going to move aside here, about all the other people, you know, all the other men. You know, they just say a lot of people aren't going to want to go until they find their loved ones. Um, Hazmat's going to stay because she lives there. But, yeah, what about the men? They actually said the men were being held somewhere else, possibly worse, poss possibly being killed off. But, no, it's just get all the women out of there. Um, you know, Carol has kind of a, a reconciliation with Rogue, you know, she was says right out to her face, right out to her face, we'll never be friends, which is pretty hard on Carol's part. It was kind of badass. But, you know, we like where we're at now. We can work together. And then, of course, she has her big damn kiss with Rhodey. And then it cuts to, um, oh, and, and then also uh, the reporter woman shows back up. What was her name? Sydney. I think we, didn't we just last see her in issue one? Has she shown up at all? I don't remember. Um, but it's almost like, oh, hey, yeah, the reason why you came in to uh, to do all this was to help rescue me. And it turns out she writes uh, her article and call and says, you know, you know, my time with C Captain Marvel, we're doomed. Yeah, <laughs> ha ha ha. Oh, and by the way, there's a two day later epilogue. Carol's hair is all grown back. Yeah, you remember how she had it shaved here and, you know, had her emblem put on the side? Why? Why did she do that? Um, because they want to tell a Mad Max story. Yeah, that's that's all grown back. Oh, this book is dumb. I was hoping that maybe Kelly Thompson was going to make some of this make sense. You know, this whole force field over the city and... I mean, it, it's not even like he was creating a harem. You know, he was just taking all the guys, attacking the women with the robots. Um, you know, it, this was almost all to draw Captain Marvel, who he saw as the perfect wife. And if she didn't work out, he somehow got Rogue there to help. Uh, what? <laughs> But, you know, he's machismo, and he's sexist, and this is Captain Marvel, and she defeats sexism because that's her power, defeating sexism, right? That's, uh, this book is dumb. This book is really stupid. Um, so, yeah, the, the next issue is going to be a War of the Realms tie-in, which I can show the back of that. That's not really a spoiler, right? With Enchantress. And, uh, is that Black Widow with her? 
Yeah, it looks like Black Widow. Um, yeah, so it has Enchantress in there, and uh, I'm I'm, real, I'm already tired of this War of the Realms crossover thing. But yeah, that will be issue six. I'm guessing book canceled issue eight, maybe, and then another. Uh, we have the new Legacy. You know, Legacy one forty three, and that'll be the whole new issue. Yeah, that's that's my prediction. So six o'clock. <laughs> if you wanted to write a Mad Max type story, Kelly, this is to you. You have a character, a villain, who can teleport. Who can teleport, you know, across dimensions. You didn't have to set this in the main Marvel universe. You could have teleported her, Carol Danvers, into his universe and had your apocalypse here and maybe alternate versions of the other characters. You could have easily done that. Instead, you... Oh, and, and then Kelly tries to be funny with She-Hulk and, you know, she's back to, you know, Hulk speak and debriefing, hungry. The less said about this book, avoid... I don't have to tell you to avoid Captain Marvel. I don't have to tell people to do this. It, this it, we just she could be a good character. Carol Danvers as Captain Marvel can actually be a good character. Now, I liked her as Miss Marvel, granted, because she had flaws. She didn't feel uh confident enough. You know, she even though she's so powerful, she's had so many bad things happen to her, it's broken her confidence. You know, she's Fighting alcoholism, you know, a recovering alcoholic. All these things that humanized her are gone. Now she's just this kind of arrogant, you know, overpowered person that just runs everything, runs through everything, has no consequences to any of her actions because she's the, she's the best. And that's what Marvel is going to keep pushing down our throats. <sighs> Make her an interesting character again. Make her like, you know, the after this whole newspaper article thing, have the people lose faith in her. Have her try to regain their trust. And you could actually have an interesting character with that. You know, she's not a bad character. You know, I, I, I say that, you know, at her core, she's not a bad character. But you have to take her back several years. You This character she's become is not good. At her core, she could be a good character. And that's what is so hard about this. Now that she has, what, a billion dollar movie? Whatever the Captain Marvel movie made. You know, you have people who now know who she is. You know, use that. Make her interesting. Don't just make her the Yaz Queen Slay that everyone jokes about. Because we're all laughing at you, Marvel. <sighs> anyway... I'm I'm done. I, I, I'm done with this for the night. Uh, Symbiote Spider-Man number two came out. I'm really looking forward to that. You know, when we're talking about this whole thing with Stan Lee, about how far Marvel, Marvel has fallen, Symbiote Spider-Man number one was really good. I'm really looking forward to reading the next issue. So that'll probably be tomorrow night. So um, as anyway, they, as anyway, <laughs> it's late. I'm tired and I've, gone on a rant on this longer than I expected. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.